has a lot to offer. And it says that the things of the world will be fun for a season. But everything, is God, everything in God is always fun. Even when it's hard, you know that there's glory coming to the kingdom. You know that people around you are hearing the witness of Jesus. The most fun is in Jesus. People think the most fun is in drinking and partying, but it's not. That's a lie. The devil's a liar. I want to share a story with you from the scriptures in the book of 1 Kings. If you've got your Bibles, you want to turn to 1 Kings, it'll be on the screen. You can Google it on your phone. You can pull out an app, whatever. 1 Kings is in the Old Testament. There's a 1 Kings, there's a 2 Kings, and it's right around the 1 and 2 Samuel. If you get to... Um, if you get to Romans, you went too far. You're in the New Testament. Scroll it on back. Scroll it on, roll it on back to the first Kings. It's in chapter 19. I want to tell you the story from, but first it's about a man named Elijah, Elijah with a J. We're going to talk about another guy named Elisha just in a moment, but right now we're talking about Elijah. And Elijah had prophesied a drought over the land and then spoken after the time of drought then he was the one who spoke for the drought to end again it was all in the power of God but Elijah was used to do this then he was spoken for the drought to end and rain came on the land in the midst of that time he had kind of showed up or showed himself and his God more powerful and more prominent than the greatest king and the greatest leader in all the world at that time that king had tried to come against Elijah, and Elijah said, you cannot look how powerful God is. In the midst of that, then he leaves from that moment, being a great man, leader, spiritual man of God, and he goes into somewhat of a almost depression and finds himself in a cave where he's just by himself with God. And his words that he has with God is, God, I want to hear from you so clear that I know it's you. Anybody want to hear from God so clear you know it's him? I mean, no doubt that you know you heard from him. Someone told me this morning, they shared something with me, and they said, I've never been more sure that God has spoken to me. And the Lord allowed Elijah to tune his ears into him and showed him that God's voice wasn't necessarily in the loud winds or the show of the world but it was in the whisper in the soft voice where God speaks in the quiet perhaps we've busied ourselves so much with so much noise around us that it's hard to hear God in the quiet so many distractions. Elijah had to run himself off to a desolate place in a cave and know that it wasn't the things that were grabbing his attention that was the Lord speaking, but it was when he tuned himself into God and heard his quiet voice. And as soon as Elijah heard the soft voice of God, he knew that was God, and God told him essentially two things to go and do. And he went right to do them. Because when you hear God and you know it's God, a voice that you know has authority and has come from the Lord, you think, man, that's God's voice. He's calling me. What do we need to do? We need to act on it. And so his acting on it comes in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19. He goes and he finds a man named Elisha, and he calls Elisha to follow him. It says this in verse 19. So he departed thence. I'm reading this in the King James. You can go look up thence, the word thence later. And found Elijah, the son of Saphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he was with the 12th. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. My title for today, if you're taking notes, hope that you are, is The Mantle. The Mantle. Oftentimes I've heard this passage preached as a passage transferring the mantle from one generation to the next. When we say the word mantle, what we're talking about here is a, a physical that he, he put it on him, but also a symbolic mantle too. I want to break that down for you here in just a moment. It, but I want us to kind of debunk something really quick because there was a time 
coming up, there is a time coming up in which Elijah hands over his mantle to Elisha. He dies and he goes away. But this was a time when he was just calling Elijah to follow him. You know, you may hear this word mantle. You may think of the thing that was over a fireplace. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this, this cloak or this mantle that was worn at the time that gets put over a prophet or a person of God. And it wasn't a robe. A robe was very similar. But mainly the reason it wasn't a robe is because a robe would have been too delicate for the situation because Elijah was known for the mantle that he wore. It was made of animal's hair and an animal skin. And he stood out because of that mantle. People saw him coming from a long ways off or he would enter into a new town. They would know this must be Elijah because he wears a mantle like this. And so he goes and he takes that mantle and he puts it on the one he calls to follow him, Elijah, not just as a symbol, not just as an act, but as a symbol. The mantle didn't really have power so much as the man of God had power. You know, in the same way that Moses was called to do great things by God, he made his staff turn into a snake. And then he took his staff and he put it over the Red Sea to part the waters. Took his staff and he put it over the rock to make water come out of the rock. There was no power in the stick. There was power in the man who had the stick. If you picked up the same rod and you tried to do it with no faith, it wouldn't happen. There was no power in the cloak. And when, he, when Elijah came and put the cloak on Elisha, it wasn't, there wasn't power in the cloak except for the power that was on the man. And what we do is we take this concept of a, of a mantle, of a passing the mantle. You may have heard this in families or in businesses or in churches. We're passing the mantle. And we take this and we make it an end of life thing. At the end of life, we pass the mantle. It's from one generation to the next. But I think what should be happening is all throughout life, we should be learning to both receive and pass the mantle. Yes, at the end of life, that's a great time to pass the mantle. And it happens between these two men at the end of life. But here we are, not at the end of life. Elisha is going to follow Elijah for several years in between. Perhaps the handoff is so complex when it comes to passing the mantle between one generation and the next. Because our generation, younger is so unaccustomed to receiving the mantle, we don't really know how to take hold of it or how to grab it or what to do when the older generation is finally passing and they're handing it down. And the older generation is so confused at how to hand the mantle because they've never really done it before. So like, I've never really done this, so I'm just kind of figure it out. And so here we are in this kind of mess of passing the mantle. Whereas if instead we lived life knowing that the mantle is meant to be passed down continually, then it wouldn't be a foreign thing when it comes to someone's end of life. This is what we do. Believers should be passing on what they have and what they know to other people constantly and always. They're not dying here in the text, so I don't know why when we read this text, we automatically go to, oh, it's a passing of the mantle. No, there's another time when the mantle's passing because a man is dying. We're really going up to heaven in a fiery chariot. How about that? New set of wheels. So I'm hoping that as you read the text, whether you've never read it before or whether you've read it a hundred times, I'm hoping that you can take your mind off it being an end of life thing and make passing the mantle an everyday thing. No longer is it for dying, it's for living. This is what we do. We need to learn to pass on what we have and to receive from other generations what they have as we're continuing to live. So you find... Elisha, in, with the oxen, plowing. Oftentimes in scripture, you find people being called by God, doing what they're already tasked to do. Moses, out with the flock. Peter, he was with the fish. David, he was in the fields. They're doing already what they know to do. And many times, Christians, the people in the church, they're sitting there waiting for something to do, doing nothing, hoping God will call them. They'll come along and their purpose will find them. But what I want us to see is that the people of God that God calls, they know what they should be doing in the moment. They're not living their eternity now. They're just, they're just doing what they know to do. And God sees them 
and many times says some variation of you're small with much. You're doing, you're doing much with small, and so I'm going to give you this. How much more can you do with something bigger? But if it had been some of the generations in this room, we would have known we should be in the field. We would see ourselves such a bigger role than that. So we would have never went to the field because we know that we're too good for the field. God's called us to bigger things than that. So we would have never went. So the prophet would have walked by. He would have looked to the field where we're supposed to be, saw no one, and kept walking. And then we'd be at home griping and complaining why no one's calling us to do something great. Whole other message, whole other time. So the context for the mantle. The, the Greek word is adareth. Sorry, Hebrew word. The Hebrew word, there's no Greek in the Old Testament. <laughs> Simple slip. New Testament, Greek, Old Testament, Hebrew. The Hebrew word adareth, it means ample or wide. The context for the mantle that was placed over the man of God and now the next upcoming man of God was a wide calling. It was a deep calling. It was an ample calling. It was to cover many things. The mantle was multi-purpose. If it's hot, it'll block the sun. If it's raining, it'll block the rain. If you're hungry, throw it on a squirrel. No squirrels. The closest thing that we would have when it comes to an article of clothing to compare to the mantle would be like a jacket. But it's so different to us because you probably have three or four jackets at your house. Maybe more. How many jackets you got? Five? Six? Three? Three? Three jackets? That's just a you know, regular old guy. I got three jackets, man. I got one for the rain. I got one that's jean. I got one for the snow. You know, what else you need? Maybe a leather one or something like that, right? I got too many jackets. I'll just confess to you. I got a whole closet, a closet that people would fill with normal clothes, and probably most people couldn't fill it up. I just filled it up only with jackets. I don't know. I go to stores. I want to buy jackets. The problem is, it's Texas. You can wear jackets three days of the year. So I'm over here rotating jackets. I wore like four in one day just to kind of get them in, you know? Like, which I was like, got a whole arm full of jackets. I'm carrying them to the car because it's not even cold outside. I'm, I got, can't wear them outside. I got to wear them inside where it's actually cold, you know, in these restaurants. And so I'm trying these jackets. I got so many jackets. And I go to stores and I'm like, oh man, I can really go for a jacket. And my wife's like, babe, you got so many jackets. I'm like, yeah, but you know, you can't have enough. This one's different. I had someone come over to the house the other day that was letting them borrow a jacket, which. Got so many of them, it doesn't even matter. And I was like, hey, I opened the closet. I said, hey, take all the ones, all the jackets you want. I won't even know they're gone. I got too many jackets. Like, but in this context, they had one jacket, one mantle. And the jacket and the mantle is so different, really, in comparison. But like I said, it's the closest thing that we have. So I want to kind of illustrate this for you because, and I brought some of my jackets. <laughs> It's hard to pick which ones to bring, you know. Blessed. If you wear my size, you're looking for a jacket, just hit me up after this, all right? The Lord's pressing on my heart. Give rid of some jackets. <laughs> it, it, help me out here, baby. How about my beautiful wife? Can you believe she had a baby a few months ago? That's crazy. Oh. <laughs> how, about, how about baby Mav in the back? Hey, baby Mav in the back. What's going on, baby? You doing good? You can't hear me, you got your earmuffs on, but everybody loves you. I, there's, a, there's a symbol between this, a connection between this mantle and who we are, because it isn't just a thing that we wear. You put on a jacket, that's fine, but when we're talking about the mantle that God has given us, it's more than just an accessory or what we wear. It's, it's all wrapped into our purpose and our calling and the anointing that God has on our life. And so when I'm talking about an, a mantle being passed from one generation to another, I'm not talking about an article of clothing or like a concept or an idea. I'm talking about the spiritual calling and anointing that God puts on a person's life. And matter of fact, every person that's a believer. So let me show you what I mean here. Hold this for me, baby. I brought one of my jackets here. This will symbolize 
the, the mantle that God has for us, okay? It just happens to match my pants perfectly. And man, when you put on a jacket like this, feeling good. You know, you've, I'm ready for a job interview. Who wants to hire me, right? Wear a jacket to your next job interview. You'll be feeling snazzy. You, you, you put it on and you wear it. You're like, this is, this is how God designed me to be. You can, you can think that you like how I look or not like how I look, but I know that I'm in my right clothes. This is, this is what I'm meant to be. And this is what it is to, to wear the mantle that God has, to be under a leader or near a leader who's putting a spiritual mantle on your life. And when it's on you, you're, it's right. It's, it's there. You're, you're in it. You're like, this is what God has destined me to do. Purpose begins to fill your life. Everything is now solved, but you're beginning to walk in your goodness. You're beginning to walk in the goodness of God. Faith is beginning to fill the inside of who you are. Boldness is beginning to rise up because you have the mantle of God on your life. But just like... Here we have so many different accessory jackets. Now it has become the same way spiritually. Where there's just different mantles we can just put on. And so what we do is, we know what the mantle that God has for us, the tailored fit, perfect little, where's that guy at? Little pocket square on there. Can't unfold it because can't get it back, you know. They're tricky things to fold. And what we do instead is we find our own mantle. We find a different jacket to put on. Everybody needs a good camo jacket, you know, with snake boots. <laughs> That's something right there. We, will you, will you, we'll play off of the, the camo. We, we find something that can cover up who we are because we know we've been called to something but we don't want to step out in it and so we put on a a mantle of camouflage to say I I have insecurities I don't want you to see them and so instead I'm just going to stand over here to the side hope that no one calls me hope that no one sees me hope that no one needs me because I know there's something in me but I'm too insecure to walk in it and if I do maybe I'll fail or I'll mess up or or maybe I'll think that that I should be this way and if I if I start singing like that or if I start talking like that if I start living like that then people may see I'm not good enough enough so you begin to wear this other mantle thinking it's right and it feels good and guess what it covers up and it hides but it's not the anointed mantle that God has on your life and because we've got so tricky with the church we can take them on and off we think oh I'll wear this mantle one day I'll wear that mantle the next I'm not feeling camo anymore I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and change it up Let's go biker. I think this could work. I don't think you have to have a bike to have a leather jacket. How about the mantle of popularity? Yeah, well, so many of us aren't in high school, so we're not thinking about popularity, but here's the deal. Like, you're making the decisions you're making, and who are they for? Are they for God? Or are they to please the people around you? And so all of a sudden I put this jacket on and I say, you know what? Today, I need, what I need to do today is I need to make sure I'm making the choices that make everyone around me happy. I want to make my mom happy. I want to make my dad happy. I want to make my friends happy. Oh, they're over here drinking? Well, I don't want to make them unhappy, so I'm over here drinking. Oh, they're over here vaping? Well, I'm over here vaping. They're over here smoking? I'm over here smoking because I'm just trying to make sure that I fit in. I got that jacket on that says, please, please, can I fit in? Can I be like you when the mantle I was given was actually calling me not to fit in? And so I put this jacket on, hoping that I can be like everybody else. When I'm made to be the opposite. And we're just over here switching mantles. How much did it feel to God who has given us a calling and an anointing on our life with a specific mantle that he wants us to wear in a spiritual way, wants us to receive from men and women who, are, who, are, who have been seeking after God, who have a gift and an anointing to put on our life, but instead we're over here, we're like, I just want to be popular with people that don't really care about me. I just want to make a post that can get enough likes so that I can feel good about myself on the inside. I can't admit it on the outside, but on the inside, that's all I want. I just want to make a, make a video that can show people that I'm doing well enough. 
It's the wrong mantle. The Holy Spirit anointed mantle doesn't have those kind of thoughts. Those thoughts are shaved away when we put that right mantle on. I got more jackets than this. How about this next one? You wear this one? Walk into Grounds and Gold? They're like, he's buying everyone coffee. <laughs> pockets, I got so many pockets in here, just dollars just falling out, you know? <laughs> God, I love you, but I want to be rich. God, I love you, but the tithe is mine. God, I love you, but my money is my money. And he's up there, I don't know if he's laughing or what he's thinking, because he owns all the money. I don't care how many times they print it over and over again. It doesn't matter. Whether it's way to the gold or not, it doesn't matter. He owns it. You're over here day trading, putting your money in stocks. The world says, oh, go buy this, go buy that, buy this, and you'll be happy. So you're just over here. You're investing, and you're saving, and you're doing all these things that all these different voices are telling you to do. And some of them are good, and some of them are not, but none of them are God. If you're saving money because the world told you to save money, then your money's corrupt. Save money because God called you to do it. If you're giving money because the world says to give money, if you're investing money because the world says to invest it, then how do you know if they're right? But if God says, is he not always right? Is his word not always faithful? Is his word not always true? And so I put on this one so I can try to get money to work out the things that I want it to work out. And the problem is that money solves problems. So sometimes it works. I think that I'm doing right because sometimes I can use money to solve the things that I want to solve. But money can't solve problems better than God. The Holy Ghost is the best problem solver. And so what I do is, I try to do both. I don't want to take off the mantles that I'm securing. But I'm hoping that also I can put on the mantle that God has for me. God, I really want to walk in the anointing that you've given me, but I don't want to give up popularity and money and my insecurities. This isn't right. So here I go living life wondering why it's not working out over and over again, and I'm blaming God, why he can't do it, why he can't do it. God must not be faithful. It's like, no, you're wearing the wrong mantle on you. You're wearing the wrong spiritual covering. You can't put this on top of this. It doesn't work like that. That was the thing about Elisha. As soon as the cloak hit his back, you know what he did? Go read it in the verses right after verse 19. He said, let me go kiss my father. Let me go kiss my mother. And then I'm coming to follow you. And you know what the prophet told him? Don't take too long. Because it's not me calling you. It's God calling you. And so he went, he kissed his mom, he kissed his dad, he came back, he took the oxen, he sacrificed them, he burned them, they were gone. He turned, he took off every mantle the world had put on his life, he put on the mantle that God had given him. Not that a man had given him, that God had given him. And he walked in that. And I believe it's time for so much of the church to throw off the mantles that have been placed on you. People have been coming around, com coming around you, and they've been taking the mantles they have, and they've been throwing them over your shoulders, and we've just been accepting them. Mantles of insecurity and of fear and of hate and of money and of jealousy and of corruption. Mantles of sexuality. Mantles of perversion and confusion and dysfunction. And they're just throwing them over us, just hoping that we're just, and here's what we're doing. And much of the church is just wearing them and wearing them and wearing them. And then we're taking the mantle, the custom fit tailored to you. This jacket ain't going to fit you. It fits me. Your jacket fits you. We're taking that and we're trying to squeeze it over top of all the mess that the world has put on us. Throw it off. And put on the mantle that was destined for your life. This is why it matters who you follow. And it matters that you too consider yourself a teacher. Because people are watching you. And here's what happens. The mantle that you wear, you're putting on their back. As they're following you, 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 are the, you are the best and greatest Jesus follower somebody knows. 
And they're looking to you saying, okay, they, they wear that kind of mantle. That's how they talk. That's how they act. That's how they think. I want to be like that. And by your interactions, you're taking your mantle and you're passing it on to them. The problem is that it's wrapped in insecurities. That's why it matters who you come under and who you walk with when it comes to those who are teaching you the gospel. Being around people that you think, okay, the mantle that they wear, that's righteous, that's pure, that's holy. That's what I want to be like. They worship, they love Jesus, they, they, they're devoted to him, they're tr- they, they want this. No one's going to be perfect. The good news is the mantle doesn't come from them, it comes from God. But you're getting around people that know how to channel, how to put on the mantle of Christ. But we're sitting in the in-between trying to find a way to not burn the oxen, but to wear the mantle that God has for us. We're, we've been trying to negotiate for six months. How can we not give up what the world has, but cling to what God has? And the problem is, you can't. You walk from this, and you walk into that. There's one mantle that can have your life. And again, I'm talking, I'm talking to the believer about the anointing and the calling and the purpose that Jesus has for every person. That your voice is unique. That your calling is unique. That what God puts in your heart, the visions and the dreams are unique. Unique to win people over to Jesus through your gifts and your passions and your skills that he has put in your heart that it's your job to hone and to go after and to train. So are we passing the right mantle? Are we receiving the right mantle from someone else that's being passed? Have we learned as Christians how to be passing the mantle to those who are around us? Or are we waiting until the end of life for one big hurrah to cling that, to throw that mantle onto somebody nearby? The good news is that what I'm talking about is not about earning salvation. We get salvation because Jesus died on the cross for us to set us free. That without Jesus' blood shed on the cross, there's no conversation to be had about a mantle because it doesn't matter because we can't walk in Jesus anyways because there's no hope. But Jesus is our hope. Because of Jesus, because of the work that he did, now we have the opportunity for eternal life. And going into eternal life, we want to make sure the mantle that we're carrying is one that's drawing other people to come. I'm not talking about salvation. I'm talking about your ministry. Your ministry. God calls us to ministry, to love people and to love God and to impact the world around us. And it's time to throw off the mantle that's been trying to stop us, that's been holding us back, that's been keeping us down, and to put on the covering that God has for us. I am pumped up after that message. I hope you guys are pumped up as well. I hope that you guys carry this, this time, this experience right here online into your week and watch and see how it transforms your whole entire week. Tomorrow, we are going to be meeting right here for some prayer and worship. Please, please, please come on out and join us. It is a perfect way to start off your week. For all my youth, everybody get ready. I'm lit. I'm excited for this week because it's going to be the best week ever. We have some special stuff going down, so you do not want to miss this awesome, awesome time that we have here. For everyone who's been giving, thank you so very much for giving. It is so powerful when you surrender our finances to the Lord and watch and see what he'll do with your finances. If you'd like to start giving, there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can do it on Venmo or you can go to Authentic.Church and give under the Give tab. We're going to see you guys right here next week or we'll see you in person at the 11 or at the 5.